Today on Cooking at Home with Carolyn, we're making a prime rib roast on the bone with rosemary oven roasted potatoes and some zucchini and summer squash on the side. We're going to go with the potatoes and I have some red skin potatoes here, about a pound of them and what I did was I just cut them up in about a half inch cubes, okay, because we're going to put them in a 450 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. So you want to cut them relatively small so they'll cook and roast evenly. I'm going to put some olive oil. Now when you're roasting, especially your vegetables like this, I'm not going to chop up garlic. When you're roasting at a high temperature like that and you chop up garlic, the garlic is going to definitely burn. So instead, I'm going to use some of the seasoning that you've seen me use before, and that's some of the Grand Diamond seasoning that you'll be able to get online. The Grand Diamond seasoning has garlic and uh, kosher salt in it so this will um, flavor the potatoes really well also what i'm going to do is i have some rosemary and this is the way the rosemary comes when you buy it in the store and what you do is you just pull the leaves off backward and you can chop them up and that's what i've done already this is about a tablespoon or so and i'm going to give these a toss and i'm going to make sure that all the potatoes are well coated with the olive oil and you'll be able to feel as you, as you toss them if they're coated or not. And if you need to put a little bit more, it's okay. All right, and I'm going to spread them out evenly. I'm going to put them on the top rack of the oven. And then we're going to turn our attention to the prime rib roast. And this is a two rib roast. And if, you, if I turn it around here, you'll be able to see it says one, two. You can see the two bones here. This prime rib roast is about four pounds. And it can easily feed four to six or four greedy people. But <laughs> what I've done is just started to uh, stud it. And I'm, this is really a gar what you call a garlic stud. I'm just making little small slits into the roast. And you can do this with other roasts. I tend to do it when I roast large pieces of meat. Just make small slits. And then I'm going to take some garlic that I've already slivered. See, I did some of this uh, ahead of time. The... Um, cloves of garlic, and then I'm just going to push it down into the slits that I've made. And as you roast, that's going to season the meat really well from the inside out. Then, I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil, and what I'm going to do is leave this fat cap on the top because this is the position that you're going to cook it in with the fat side up because you're going to want the fat to keep the meat moist as it roasts. And you're going to roast this for some time, depending on how you um, like your beef cook, whether you like it rare or medium or um, medium well to well done, then you would make sure you take all that into consideration while you're cooking it. Okay, then I'm going to take some more of the same seasoning and just season it. And make sure you get the whole roast. One thing I hate more than anything is meat that's been seasoned on one side. And you can turn it over and get the rib up under here. That is all really good. All right. Now I have one I've already done, and we'll show you that one in a minute. Now, what I'm gonna do is get my skillet hot over here over medium high heat. I have some um, summer squash, which is the yellow squash that you can get pretty much year round now. Um, and then I have some zucchini. You could probably go about a half zucchini per person if you're trying to decide how much you should make. Um, cause, because this is a large one, you might want to go half per person. If they're rather small, then you can count maybe one zucchini per person. So what I did was I just cut them in half, and then I cut them on the bias about a fourth of an inch thick. And I'm going to saute them with some onions. So let's get some olive oil down in the pan. A couple of tablespoons. And I'm going to saute the onions in just until they're soft. Throw those down. I'm not going to throw the garlic in. I have one clove of garlic that's going to go in. I'm not going to throw that in right away because I don't want it to burn. And this is about a half of a small onion. You can probably see the roast over here that we have done sitting on the stove. And what I'm doing right now is it's just resting. I cooked it till it was about 150 degrees internal temperature. And I did that by using the um, probe thermometer that I've showed you before. This is the best investment you'll ever make. And it's going to be really important when you make large pieces of meat because 
when you're using a conventional oven, and that's a regular oven that most of us have, a conventional oven cooks typically slower than a convection oven. A convection oven has a, a fan in the back and it blows the hot air around um, the inner parts of the oven on the inside. So that means the food that you're cooking is going to be cooked more evenly and, and quicker. It cooks 20% quicker. So when you're cooking in a conventional oven that does not have a fan, you'll need to make sure that you might need to raise the temperature depending on the recipe that you're using. Today I'm cooking the potatoes at 450 degrees at a regular bake setting conventional style. I'll let you know when I cook when I use the convection setting on my oven because my oven just so happens to do both settings. So today we're using regular conventional oven setting, okay? 450 degrees for the potatoes and the roast was cooked at 400 degrees for 30 minutes first. Turn the oven down to 300 and let it cook for about 20 minutes per pound, okay, depending on how you like your um, uh, meat to be cooked. But once again, your probe thermometer will tell you how done the meat is in the inside. What you want to do is stick the thermometer in the thickest part of the meat and then read the internal temperature and that will let you know. Make sure you stay away from the bones because that will give you a false reading, okay. So now I'm going to throw in some garlic. Toss that around real quick, and then we're just going to drop our vegetables. Okay. Literally, this only takes about three to four minutes till it's just fork tender. If you like your zucchini cooked a little further along, what you might want to do is take a fork. Don't stick a knife in your vegetables to see how tender it is because a knife will go through pretty much anything. The knife is sharp on, on one of the edges. Let's hit it with some pepper and some salt. I can remember eating this vegetable at, you know, some of my mom's friends' house sometimes. God, they would just cook it so long, it would just be like a hot, limpy mess, and it was a big turnoff. So as I got older and started cooking vegetables more, I would decide how long I'm going to cook something. Am I going to cook it to death, or am I going to leave some of the vitamins and the minerals in it? Because you can cook those out if you cook it too long. See, at this point, if you want to, you can take them out and taste them to see if they're tender enough for you. If you want to let them go a little bit longer, that's fine. But remember, when you take them out, they're still going to they're gonna be next to each other and they're going to steam each other. So they're going to limp up a little bit. So that's why I said no more than five minutes. Three or, three or four minutes if you like them kind of crunchy. I'm going to take these out and give them a quick toss because we're about midway the, at the cooking point. Because sometimes in a conventional oven, it will tend to cook instead of because the air is not going around it in, in the uh, other style of oven so what you're going to do is make sure you toss them because in a conventional oven the side that's touching the um, the pan will cook first or it'll brown up so you want to turn them over so the other sides of the potatoes can get exposed I'm going to put these back in they'll be done in a little while okay now what I'm going to show you how to do if you if you would like <laughs> But I, I usually do it too, because I, I usually, uh, if I'm serving this to guests, I want to uh, be able to cut it as easy as possible. So what I do is I take it off the bone. Here we go. I'm going to run the knife along the bone. Nice piece. Come back over here, and you can just cut it in nice slices. All right. And what I did at the end was just sprinkle some fresh Italian parsley right on the top of it at the last minute. Here's some of the potatoes that we cooked. The rosemary. And rosemary is really good. It's woodsy. So you don't have to use a lot. It really rings out when you roast it with the potatoes. Let's try my vegetables. Mm. Hope you like this recipe as much as I do. See you next time on Cooking at Home with Carolyn.